What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today Dame Brugler dropped his seven round mock draft. So after my 10 hour shift, we are here to review every single pick because I love you and I am also insane just like Dane because making these seven round mock drafts are a pain in the ass. So we can at least do the nice due diligence of giving our time to be able to at least give actual thoughts because it's going to be a pain, but it's going to be a good pain. No pain, no gain. Below my face is my board. Below that are all the great ways to get involved in the community. Let's get into this. Let's have a good time. Uh, you know, again, just it's going to be in the late upload, but you got to do what you got to do. I get off work at 530, and I want to make sure that you guys get your content because the draft is a week away. Holy shit. Let's get into this. Saving ourselves some time. Number one pick, it is the Chicago Bears going Caleb Williams. Let's, you know, that's the given pick. So let's have a little bit more analysis on some of the other stuff. Obviously, you see where Caleb is on my board. That also kind of acts as a way to explain what I think about a player. But my board is also changing. There's a player who I am going to highlight in this that is not updated on my board yet, but will be probably top 64 when all is said and done. But at pick number two, the commanders go Jaden Daniels. By the way, this is a live react because I'd be a psychopath to have actually read all 200, you know, 50 something picks. And it's more fun for me to react to this live as if this is the real draft happening. So that's another reason why I do that. Uh, Commanders go Jaden Daniels. It's the day one, you know, perfect system fit for Cliff Kingsbury. The only issue with Jaden that I have is his frame as well as his um, processing over the middle of the field. I don't think he trusts his eyes over the middle and likes to opt for his feet. Luckily for himself, he is a damn good athlete and has some damn good feet. Uh, then we got the Patriots taking Drake May at number three. It just seems like quarterback going one through three, and in this case, one through four, but we'll talk about that in a sec, is going to be very, very likely. I personally am on the boat because, you know, I am a Drake May guy, or not a Drake May guy. I'm technically not a Drake May guy. Drake May guy. I am a, um, why am I tri forgetting his name? Bo Nix guy. I literally have them next to each other on the board. I should probably just scroll down a little bit for myself, but uh, I'm more of a Bo Nix guy, so I do think if you take Marvin Harrison Jr. here, solve the biggest issue this team has not been able to solve since pretty much Randy Moss, and then end up, you know, getting some good value on a quarterback later on, that might be a little bit more up my alley if I were jamming the Patriots, but Drake May, if you have the time to develop him, does have a significantly higher ceiling, so I think this regime does have some time, and it's not a bad move. I just personally love being able to move back or being able to get the best uh, receiver in the class for a team that has yet to address it. But we'll see what um, our good old friend here in Dane does for the draft. Also, um, did invite Dane to come on the show. Probability of that happening is very low, but obviously would be great to be able to have a great mind like himself. Obviously, he is you know, ascending to be the top draft guy, um, someone who obviously we've all had respect for, but you know, with the likes of Todd McShay dripping off and uh, dripping off. That's an awful term, but it's an awful verb to use there. But essentially dropping off, uh, we do have a little bit of a vacancy for that to open up. And, you know, Dane has certainly solidified himself as a prime candidate for essentially being the number two face of the draft. Um, I mean, Daniel Jeremiah is in there, too. But Dane, respect to him. Uh, Minnesota does trade up. It takes the 1123 uh, and ooh, a 2025 third. This is the first time I have not seen the three first round pick move up. And you know why I think that they shouldn't use a three pick move up? Because it took it's pretty much three first round picks to move from 12 to three for Trey Lance when everybody was like, holy shit, like Trey Lance is the next big thing. This is the fourth best quarterback. This isn't even the third best quarterback. And they're moving a shorter range. And they have two picks in this draft. And it's pretty damn like it's pretty comparable to that value, if not even better. So I do like seeing that, you know, again, it wouldn't affect the mock draft if he wanted to toss it in anyways, but you know, it is what it is. I just don't think it will be three first. It just doesn't make very much sense uh, for Minnesota, in my opinion, to really cap string your team in terms of draft capital, but it is probably the best spot for a quarterback. So I do understand that as well. Uh, JJ, I actually get to work with somebody who played division one quarterback a couple years ago. So shout out to my boy Tristan there, but he 
was essentially talking through the mentality of a former quarterback looking at J.J. McCarthy and having a lot of faith in him. Essentially, he plays well within an offense, keeps them in rhythm, and he does have those splash plays. That's essentially what a team like the Minnesota Vikings that essentially just need to maintain momentum, not really gain the splash plays because they're a good enough team all around. It's what they need in order to succeed, if that makes any sense to you. But, you know, to me, it does make sense. A Cardinals then trade back up. Ooh. Okay, so Cardinals traded down and back up last year. So it is certainly within their DNA, so to speak. So I I find it interesting. I just don't know if I personally would make this move if I'm the Chargers. Like, you are only giving up 11, like you're giving up six spots, getting a 35th pick. That's awesome. But you are giving up Marvin Harrison Jr. For a team like the Chargers that really does need that number one receiver and Marvin just seems to fit that so damn well, I'm excited to see what he's going to be doing for the rest of this, but I just couldn't justify this because I don't think the I don't think the Cardinals necessarily. Well, let me let me put it from the Chargers point of view, because I think from the Cardinals point of view, I'd make this trade. You're essentially getting 23 in a future third to get a guy who I think you should get at four anyways. Um, but, you know, if I am the Los Angeles Chargers, I don't have enough issues, so to speak, in order to justify moving back that far. Now, again, it's it, we'll see what they do. You know, I'm sure that they actually might end up moving back up because the receiving classes, you know, it's, in my opinion, there's a two top guys and then there's a big fall off. But uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a great move for the Cardinals. I just don't know if I could justify it for the Chargers. Uh, Giants get Malik Neighbors at six. So RIP to that idea. I thought maybe there was a chance that we could see uh, the Chargers trading up for, back up for Malik. But you know, uh, the Giants end up getting a superstar weapon. Somebody ended up going to my comments and trying to say if I, since I don't believe Malik is just a slot that I don't know football. If you're going to say something stupid, if just, I mean, I guess that seems pretty obvious as satire, but you know, eh, sometimes it makes you look like an ass and that's, you know, some people are, and we love them for it. But let's not do that in my comment section. Let's have some good football discourse because Malik neighbors can be a true number one receiver. So I do think that, you know, it's a good pick for the Giants. I just feel bad for Malik because I don't know if Daniel Jones can actually make Malik as good as Malik should be. Of course, Malik is not just playing one year of football. He's not just playing two years. It just might mean that we unfortunately don't get the pleasure of seeing Malik neighbors being as good as he could be for maybe a year, if not two, if not three. Uh, Titans go Joe all at seven. Seems the easy shoe in if he is there. Left tackle is a massive position of need. Joe Alt's a great left tackle. He's my left tackle one. I do have a top 20 offensive tackles list out right now, so feel free to go check that out. Pick number eight, the Falcons go Dallas Turner. This team does need a number one edge rusher, and Dallas Turner is phenomenal. Uh, Raheem Morris is someone who I trust a lot to get a lot out of him. I've talked about my theory about Terry and Arnold quite a few times over the past couple of videos, so I'll allow you guys to go check that out. But essentially, um, you know, defensive coaching staff has had Trent McDuffie as well as Devon Witherspoon uh, in their previous coaching life. And essentially, they were probably targeting uh, Witherspoon in the last year at that number eight selection, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it is potentially viable but this is also a class that is so damn stacked at corner that i have like 18 corners that i would probably put on the field uh, 17 corners to be more specific to put on the field so you know this is definitely a draft where i would trust the top end of the edge talent and then try to go a little bit more for depth at corner when most drafts are kind of the opposite in the recent memory uh in the recent years pick number nine bears go romo dunze and mr romo dunze is a top end option for the bears i can't complain about that one it really does pretty much give you a contingency plan for keenan and it actually gives you somebody who can make an impact right away uh jets go brock bowers so i've talked about this of course with the offensive tackle class ending up actually really surprising me uh, i just ended up being probably the best tackle class that i have studied and i don't say hyperbolic things in order to get reactions like i'm just being genuine here uh, I'm someone who I love offensive line. Like that's my favorite thing. It's offensive line and corners. Those are my two favorite positions to pretty much study in general. Like it's where I get my most passion as you guys could probably see. Um, you know, I think that originally saying, Hey, I'd rather trust a third round weapon and a first round offensive tackle, given the injury history that has been on this team to, you know, 
I, I just would prefer that, especially when you have Aaron Rodgers, who is older, coming off an injury, rather than, you know, having that first round weapon and then, you know, hoping for development of a third round talent at offensive tackle or even later. And I still feel that way, even though this is the best tackle class um, that I've studied. I still think that that's the right move. Go offensive tackle because history says, you know, you're not going to be getting these two starting tackles the entire time. I don't trust the backup tackles and I don't want a developmental guy to be forced in early, but it's less of an issue for me now knowing how damn deep this class is watching these guys progress over the entire year. So uh, Brock Bowers is the best player on the board and he's going to be a massive help. I just also, you know, like deep down, I just really pray for Aaron Rodgers and I pray for everybody to stay healthy. And honestly, um, this is, you know, assuming a best case scenario. Pick number 11, the Chargers go JC Latham. Love the fact that it's guard slash tackle. His uh, processing really is the one area that needs work. Again, feel free to check out that tackle video where I go more in depth. Um, you know, I just don't know if I would do this if I were the Chargers. So essentially you're getting a early second round pick, essentially a late first to move back 11 or move back six spots, excuse me, from five to 11 to get someone who I don't know would actually start at right tackle because there is that processing concern. A lot of people have come out and say that they think JC Latham might be the bust of the first round because he probably will end up being a really good guard, but he's going to be a bust for the role that he's taken. And I do worry about that. I don't think there's a role in the chargers at that guard spot. That's worth a number 11 pick. And again, you're hedging your bets here and saying like, hey, we're going to just go balls to the wall for a tackle. But even Dane is at least acknowledging the fact that he could end up being a guard. I think Tali Fawag is very similar. My hot take is that I think Amarius Mims and Tyler Guyton will be the two, ta two right tackles to come out of the first round or the early second range. And the rest of these guys might end up being guards. Because I think that Tali Fuaga is better as a guard, might end up being more valuable as a tackle. Because I love you guys know I love Tali Fuaga. But when it comes to Latham, he might end up just having to be a guard. So there's definitely that concern. And then you have the rest of the right tackles after that. Denver Broncos then take Tali Fuaga. So I love this as well. I wasn't even thinking about whether Dane was designating him as a guard or a tackle, but I mean, I love him to death. You also do have a great mentor there in Garrett Bowles. So the chances of Fuaga succeeding are higher. Same thing with, you know, Latham with Rashawn Slater there. But I mean, again, I think there's a bigger role for the Broncos at a guard spot in case Tolly can't work a tackle than um, the Chargers if uh, we do not see Latham performing that well. Vegas Raiders go Terry and Arnold. He is my best defensive player in the class. I love him to death. His interview skills are through the roof. I would be surprised. Like, don't be surprised if he ends up going top 10. Just don't. He's a very smart corner who plays a very valuable role. People talk about slot as if it's devalued. Like, to be honest, we're seeing some of the best receivers working out of the slot now. It is a valuable position. So, uh, Terry and Arnold, even if he ends up being a slot, has all the talent in the world. He has all the IQ in the world for football. But not only that, he has the EQ as well. You look at these interview skills, they're phenomenal. You can guarantee you he's impressing staffs. And that's one you want in your locker room. This is a guy who could be the MVP of your team, so to speak. And he could be the CEO of that defense, the guy you put on the podium. That is valuable. And I am concerned that we're starting to undervalue where some of these top corners are going to go. But we shall see. Uh, pick 14, the Saints go Olu Fushanu. I love it. Best player available for a position of need. And um, I mean, again, it's just, it's a top end position. It's, you know, you need it desperately. Like kick Trevor Penning to guard, kick him to right tackle, uh, get the best offensive tackle available. I do love that for sure. Colts end up going Quinion Mitchell at 15. That's again, one of the top options you could ever ask for. He's a phenomenally large, powerful, high upside corner. Uh, fits right in what they're looking for. So Quinion Mitchell, probably as good as you can ask for at 15, besides Brock Bowers. Pick 16, we got the Seahawks going Troy Fautanu. Love that. Oh, by the way, I miss said it again. It's Fashanu. I always say Fashanu for Olu. So apologies about that. I mean, do I care that much? No, we're talking about the player, not exactly how to pronounce someone's name. If I were in linguistics, then we'd have an issue. But Troy Fautanu is phenomenal. Love him to the Seahawks. He's also going back with his former OC, if I'm not mistaken. So that's pretty sick. But, you know, with potential concerns at right tackle there as well for the future, you have someone who is a contingency plan 
instant impact and contingency plan. Um, offensive line is how you end up winning it through the battle of the trenches. So I love that to death for Seattle. If they cannot get a trade back partner, I do think they should try to get a trade back partner. The Bills end up trading a good amount of draft capital um, to move up to 17. Essentially, Jacksonville is guaranteeing themselves a little bit more of a down year based on this trade compensation. They're going for the future here, but we will see what they get. Maybe it is A.D. Mitchell. And I have seen A.D. slipping a little bit more. He's 10 right now on my board. I do have my comp for him being George Pickens with Terrace Marshall mentality. That could end up being what really puts A.D. Mitchell down on my board because I have to sit a little bit more with it. I had issues with his overall work ethic at the same time. You know, I've had issues with receivers with that in the past, and it hasn't really fully come to fruition except for Terrence Marshall. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The Bills end up trading up for Brian Thomas. I don't think if I'm Jacksonville, I'm accepting this offer because I think they need a wide receiver one. And unless A.D. Mitchell is there at 28, which if he is, again, this live reaction, then this is a great move. But the Bills do need a wide receiver. It's a great move on the Bills' behalf. You know, you are essentially leveraging your future capital to win now. And, you know, it's not a bad idea. So uh, Bills end up getting Brian Thomas. Great move for them. The Cincinnati Bengals go Byron Murphy. This is a good right tackle class. You do have someone in place right now to play right tackle if you don't get someone who can play right now. I think if you get Byron Murphy, that's a great move. And if you get, end up getting Roger Rosengarten down the board, God bless. God bless. That's a killer one, too. So I'm excited to see where Roger goes in this as well. Rams end up going Jared Verse at pick 19. I mean, the Rams need an edge, too. Jared Verse compliments Byron Young very, very well. Steelers go Graham Barton. You know, I really don't like this for a particular reason. I'm a Steelers fan, so you guys know I'm going to get a little bit more fired up about this. I have theorized the value of a center and why so many teams have it much lower than maybe what we as analysts or media like to be able to claim the value is. And it's because the special value of a center is being able to have that IQ to recognize blitzes and being able to call protections. When you have an elite veteran quarterback or even just a veteran quarterback in general who has high IQ, they're going to be the ones calling the protection packages. So unless you have a young quarterback which I don't think a rookie center is really going to have significantly higher IQ than a rookie quarterback, but some of them really are. That's why I love Tyler Linderbaum. But unless they're really like that, you're not getting the proper value out of a center. You're essentially getting the value of a guard who is going to be more consistent on impacting the play because they need to snap accurately. That's why I think it's been dropped. And it's why you don't really see guards go super high. Well, I mean, you do, but that's because they're just used a little bit more. I mean, I'm honestly a little bit more confused as to why center and guard are not valued almost identically. I personally would value center a little bit more than guard, just between you and me, because you have to snap the ball every play. But Graham Barton, to me, he's not overwhelmingly a great player. Um, you know, I do like him. But we're talking at pick 20 here. And as a Steelers fan, I do see the value in going after offensive tackle here, whether it's Tyler Guyton, Amarius Mims. You could go plethora of other routes, A.D. Mitchell here, because we do need some extra help at wide receiver. This is a deep center class as well. Hunter Norzod just came in. That's the dude who I was going to talk about, who I will talk about. I, I love the idea of the Steelers getting offensive line help. So again, I would end up giving this pick like a C plus or a B minus because it, it helps. It's an instant impact. But Graham Barton still has flaws to his game that, you know, I don't have him. I haven't graded equally to Hunter Norzod. I'll give it that. So that's to be fair. I'm a fan of Hunter Norzod, but he's a great athlete. His hand placement's atrocious. And if you want, if you know me, if you do not put your hands in the right spot, pause, um, you end up just not being one of the guys who I like. It's just something for me. Like, I don't like dudes who are just don't know where to place their hands because I think NFL defenders are a lot more cognizant of how to get around players who try to bear hug them and just don't know how to properly engage. So that's why I have my little spiel right there. But I do think we still should go after an offensive tackle or a wide receiver. The Dolphins go lay out to lot to at pick 21. You know, coming after two season-ending injuries to your top edge rushers, I certainly believe that lot to would be the proper value here. If you're not going to address offensive line, which I still think you should, but, you know, recent history has suggested you're not really fully on board with that. This is the right way to go. NFL thrives on multiple edge rusher rotations, and especially with two guys coming off of the injuries, 
and an injury history, it is smart, similar to what I talked about with the Jets, to be able to have a contingency plan in place. At the very minimum, it keeps the guys fresh. So it's even more logical than going after an offensive tackle when you have one that's injury prone. But at pick 22, we got the Eagles going to Marius Mims. I mean, if you don't go Tyler Guyton, Amarius Mims is the right thing to do. Amarius uh, Mims, I think his foot speed's a little too slow. That's the main reason for his issues, besides the fact that I am worried that he's going to have the Mekhi Becton big dude high injury level effect. But Amarius has all the potential in the world. I don't think he can play guard, but to be fair, I don't think Tyler Guyton could either. So Amarius Mims is a freak. He's built on Mount Olympus. I'm very excited to see what, uh, what will come of him come draft day, because we'll definitely see if the Mackay Becton like EBGBs start seeping in to the draft community or into the NFL front offices, because for me, it just is, you know, with all this time, you certainly start thinking about things like that. Cardinals then go Cooper to Gene. This is part of that Minnesota trade back. Remember, they do not have pick 35 because they ended up trading back up for their star wide receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, Cooper to Gene is a very talented corner. He could also end up being a safety. I don't think he'll end up being a nickel because I don't trust the fluidity of his hips. And when you're going against some of the smaller elite route runners, probably not the best idea when you should have the guy with the most fluid hips to put someone who doesn't have fluid hips. So Cooper DeGene would end up being a boundary corner or a safety. To be fair, I think that he'll end up working just fine. This is a good value. I personally would just more so caution against it because this is a really good corner class. And, you know, I do think you're going to get proper value a little bit later, but Cooper DeGene is not a bad pick. Cowboys go Tyler Guyton, you know, 80 miles or some, maybe it's a hundred miles away from here in Dallas. Uh, you would end up keeping Tyler Smith left guard because he probably will end up being an all pro. My only issue with this is that we don't know if Tyler Guyton can play left tackle right away or in general, like he is a right tackle you're essentially saying, hey, we're going to pray that the Hail Mary works. Your developmental guy, like even in Mobile, everybody kind of knew that. But you're, we're going to move you to left tackle. So already, that's a completely different movement set and everything like that. If you're trying to train yourself to be a right tackle, you have to retrain yourself to be a left. That's why guys can't always make that transition. And then since he can't really play guard, it's not like you're saying, hey, if you don't work out a left tackle, you can play you at guard. I just don't trust it. So that's why I'm saying like you're really pigeonholing yourself into one future here rather than having flexibility, like I would say trade back and end up getting a Jordan Morgan who end, could end up being a guard as well. Pick number 25, the Packers go Jackson Powers Johnson. You know, this is a super flexible piece to add to your squad. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, Z JPJ is, he's graded higher than Grant Barton. But he is my number one center. He's just a little bit lower graded than I expected. I wanted to be a little bit more wowed by him. Uh, didn't end up doing that. So he's around like the 40s range on my board. And that's perfectly fine for 25. It's just, you know, I was really hoping for him to be a top 32 guy. Uh, 26, the Buccaneers go Nate Wiggins. Like Nate Wiggins is a phenomenal player. Uh, one of the smartest corners in the class. Probably the best on average coverage player for the draft position that you'll find out of the top guys at pick number 27 the cardinals go chop see i'm not going to agree with this one because i mean granted chop this is a developmental team you do have time but you know i think chop is a designated pass rusher i don't trust him in the run i also don't love his balance the dude is on the ground way too often and he's a great athlete but that's pretty much what he's been. He's one with a lot of athleticism. And some of those high-end reps, the Illinois game, for example, when he lined up over the center, he had a beautiful move that essentially reminded me of Miles Garrett. And I'm like, wow, I see the ceiling with you. The Cardinals, I don't trust there to be a mentorship or a player there that can maximize his potential. So I'm scared for Chop Robinson's sake, and I'm scared for the Cardinals' sake to spend a pick on someone that you need someone who is high IQ, high EQ, and just very experienced in the building to make the most out of a player. Pick 28, the Jaguars go Kool-Aid McKinstry. We got to speed this up. You got another six rounds to do. But of course, these are the players that, you know, really matter on those evaluations that obviously we've talked about all year. But um, the Jaguars traded back and got Kool-Aid. I still think they should go corner a wide receiver one here because I still see A.D. Mitchell on the board. But at least you ended up still getting a really good impact starter while getting that future second round pick. And then I think two fourths a Vegas Raiders trade up with Detroit. I don't think this happens because the drafts in Detroit. I feel like all the people in Detroit would be like, bro, what the hell? But um, the Vegas Raiders trade up for Michael Penix. 
Now, right now, uh, there, I mean, in Texas, this isn't allowed because we have only DPSs. We don't allow uh, draft like casinos or anything. We don't allow actual gambling, which technically DPSs. That's a topic for another day. But uh, if you guys want to use a DPS in a state that is against sports books, then feel free to use my code Hail Mary over there at Underdog Fantasy. Great people over there, and you get to have a match about to hundred ball uh, up to a hundred dollars on ten dollars or more of a uh, first deposit, and it sends me fifty bucks. So being completely transparent, everything helps, and you get to end up having some free money on me. But the Raiders moving up for Michael Penix. He is a very good quarterback with a super high ceiling. You know, the inconsistencies are there. The injury history is there. There's definite concerns, but the Raiders do need to try to make a push for a top quarterback. You get that fifth year contract. We'll see what happens. Um, I just don't think that the Lions would end up trading out on draft day when they're in Detroit. But you do end up getting back that third round pick that you ended up sending for Carlton Davis. Pick 30, we got the Ravens going Jordan Morgan. Yes, I know it's not the same pick. We'll get that, but it's a third round pick. Roughly the same value. Uh, Baltimore Ravens then go Jordan Morgan. I think Jordan Morgan might end up being a guard. He's listed as a guard on mine, but if we're going to be honest, I should just edit this while we're here right now. We're just going to go and make that into an offensive line category because he still is graded as a tackle as well. Could end up being that. Uh, you'll end up probably trying to use him as a right tackle, and he's a really mobile player, and I do think he ends up being a guard for you, but regardless, you're getting a good player who will be sticking on your team for a while. 31, the Niners go Jerzon, Johnny Newton. I mean, this is as good as you could probably ask for, except if Byron Murphy somehow slipped to you. He's a great player, just has some concerns in terms of um, overall when you know he brought this up on Twitter, uh, coaching. He apparently is tough to coach, is what it is. Chiefs then end up getting apparently another personality error because of his blood glucose and diabetes like come on um and ad mitchell you know if this ends up being empirical i will end up taking that type of that seriously i mean again mood swings do happen you don't end up dating a girl who's hella bipolar because you can end up getting like it puts you in some pretty bad situations right i mean some people can handle it some people can some people can't the chiefs They've proven to be able to have some interesting personalities, but I don't feel like they're the team that necessarily tries to target guys with personality concerns. So if the Chiefs do this, it kind of defeats the purpose. And, you know, just get the guy, get the guy an apple or something. Get him some, like, blood glucose. Get get that spiked up or something. I don't know. I'm not going to be an expert. I was just trying to make a stupid-ass joke. But the Chiefs going AD Mitchell will be great value. Let's go into round two. Panthers, hello. Panthers go Lad McConkey at 33 you know, you're trying to get your future boundary number one. Deontay Johnson could be replaced by Lab McConkey in time. I'm not sure. Uh, I love Lab McConkey. Got to meet him there in Mobile. I just think that Keon Coleman's more that X receiver that I'd be looking for to complement the rest of the squad. Kingsley Suamatea goes to the Patriots. I just don't trust him as a left tackle. So I'm not for that, but I do love the idea of going after offensive tackle there. Pick 35 for the Chargers. Chris Jenkins going back with his former defensive coordinator, uh, love that contingency or continuation plan there, but I also don't think Chris Jenkins is worth the pick 35 spot when at pick 37, I still think he would be there, you know, for the chargers. Like, I don't know. I don't like that's pro that's pretty poor analysis. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to call myself out on that one. I don't think Chris Jenkins would get me going at pick 35. I would be trying to go after maybe a little bit more of a valuable player. If you swap Keon Coleman, Chris Jenkins, maybe I'd be down for that. Uh, but essentially the Chargers end up getting Keon Coleman as well. So we'll just bunch them together and talk about him. Chris Jenkins will be an addition. Defense interior has not been full, fully solved on the Chargers back like a year or two ago. They're trying to go hard for Fletcher Cox. Hard for Cox. Love that. Uh, I did not plan that. But, you know, they still have telegraphed the fact they still need defensive interior. Get that instant uh, chemistry there as well. Keon Coleman. I love Keon Coleman. He's a top. Is he number 32? Oh, he's number 33. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was about to say he's a top 32 guy on my board. Might end up being that way, depending on uh, how I feel about some of these other players as like my mind continues to go a million miles an hour. Patrick Paul goes at 36. Like I'm just not a Patrick Paul guy. I don't have my top 20 tackles. Does that make me a bad scout? No. I mean, we all just sometimes don't like players. I hope he works out, but I just didn't see it. 
So it is what it is. Uh, Titans go Marshawn Neeland. So fun fact, Marshawn actually might be joining us on day three of the draft. Obviously, friend of the show. Uh, feel free to go check out that interview. He is my number 16 player. No, I'm not biased. Like, I really don't give a damn if he came on the show or not. I love my boy, Brennan Jackson. So we're going to be talking about him soon as well. Uh, we'll be doing an after the draft show with Brennan Jackson too. So excited to see him. I'm praying to God he gets drafted and I hope he gets drafted way higher than, you know, maybe where I've even taken him in the past, but you know, it's going to be super exciting if we can end up being, bringing on Marshawn Neeland on day three, and then, you know, even potentially see if Brennan Jackson will join us on day two or one, but you know, Titans getting extra edge rushing help is never a bad idea. I'll never shame them for it. I just think they need linebacker help really desperately. And there is good enough starting talent at this pick. Uh, pick 39, Panthers go TJ Tampa. I'm not a TJ Tampa guy. He was not in my top 17 corners. I know, crazy, but I just didn't really. There were a lot of his reps I just didn't appreciate. Let's put it that way. Uh, I thought he was a little bit stiff. And, you know, he was, I thought he was more fast in a straight line than his actual testing numbers were. So the one factor that I kind of liked about him ended up not being the case. But statistically speaking, he's been phenomenal over the past couple of years. Um, also, he is active on Twitter, so feel free to at him as well. And he's a cool dude. Like, he's been able to interact with me before. So nothing against him personally, just on a professional level. Like, I owe you guys honesty. And as Rakestraw then goes to the Commanders, I do think they need a corner one slash corner two. This is a great pickup. He is a top 15 player on my board. I know a lot of people don't like him that much, but... It is what it is. He's a good player. I like him a lot. Pick number 41, Packers end up going Darius Robinson. Uh, at this point, that's very solid value. I don't think defensive line is a big position for the Packers to target, but they have so many picks. Going best player available is never a bad idea. And you still have a lot of guys who are developing on that defensive front. So you do get someone who's more of a day, day one impact. It's not the move I would make, but it's certainly one that I wouldn't mind for the value. At pick 42, the Texans go Mikey Sainer still. He's a fun player, energetic guy. He'll be the face of the defense, whether that's him getting absolutely destroyed. And if he ever plays zone coverage, he has a tough time doing that. Uh, then you might see him on a highlight reel in the wrong way, but this dude will be able to sniff out screens really well. He's super fast. He's willing to take hits. Like he is someone who I want on my roster. So if you have to spend pick 42 to get it, it's a little bit rich, but I'm perfectly fine spending that pick 42 for the or 43, excuse me, for the Falcons, Mike Hall Jr. He's a fun player to watch too, man. He's a good player. Great first step. I think that he's a little too Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. There's a lot of plays where he's completely taken out of the play, but there's also a lot of plays where he makes some unbelievably quick uh, moves in order to be able to get free and shed to the, whether it's the rusher or the passer. He's a great player. I don't know if 43 is where I'm going to have him within range, but he will be at least within like palatable range at that point. He won't be a top 43 player for me, but for the Falcons that do need a little bit more of a contingency plan on defensive interior, not a bad move. Again, I'd be looking at corner, but we'll see what happens. 44, Zach Frazier goes to the Lions. I thought Zach Frazier was a fine talent. He's not as good as the people who think he's like incredible, but I'm kind of just right there in the average of the consensus. You know, this is a solid range for him. He's going to be a backup for a year coming off a broken leg. Like he needs a little time to heal and you have really good mentors there and Ragnar and I think Zeitler as well. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. And then Jackson as well. Well, no, Jonah Jackson left. I'm tripping. Who's the right, who's the right guard? Anywho, let's let's continue on. Uh, we have a lot more guys to remember rather than having to talk about interior offensive linemen. Saints end up going Xavier Worthy. It's a little bit too thin of a wide receiver core for me to justify Xavier Worthy when you have Ricky Pierce all there. I think Ricky's a more complete receiver that would complement a little bit better. But I do love that we see Ricky Pierce all go to the Colts because of that Florida connection there with Anthony Richardson. Uh, pick number 47, we got the Giants going Jaden Hicks. The Giants do need a safety. It's one of the positions we don't really talk about, but man, their corner two is not, not good. I'd prefer to go after a higher end player than a safety, but again, this is probably second on the list in terms of where I would look. To be fair, Bo Nix is here. I'd be taking that, but maybe it's third on the list. Pick number 48, the Jaguars go Troy Franklin. I mean, he's just a little too thin for me to have him as my number one receiver. I just don't trust the options that are there to be a number one receiver. You did end up moving back and end up getting Kool-Aid McKinstry. So at least you got the DB number one. And I guess you are really playing for the future because I just don't really see that empirically working out. Uh, I think that you're a cap 
you're essentially stringing your team a little bit. Troy Franklin's a first round quality player if you look solely at his tape, which maybe that's what we should do. But, you know, when you analyze what he, he we ended up being a lot smaller than projected as well. But, you know, when you end up looking at what happened in the offseason, for me, it was extremely underwhelming. I might be overvaluing this. We'll see come the years um, to come with Troy Franklin. But when I see someone disrespect the gauntlet drill, it bothers me. I think that you should have a baseline respect and preparation for all the drills that you'll do. He ended up not doing that, showed distrust in his hands. It, it was an issue, but he loves to block. He's actually a good blocker for his size, and he makes the most out of the fact that he's not super duper fast at his size. He's 4'4", which is great, but you know, 170, he kind of should be 4'4". He's a good route runner. He's a good player. He just needs to work on his drop issues, and then, again, just got to watch out, man. You got to watch out. You got to show some respect for that gauntlet drill. And again, we'll see in time because, you know, time is the, is the master of all. It will show us whether we should actually value the gauntlet drill like that. Cooper BB ends up going to the Bengals at 49. He is my number one guard in the class that is a pure guard because y'all know what I think of Tali Fawaga. But uh, Cooper BB to the Bengals is just BPA. I'm not going to hate it on hate on it at all. Junior Colson ends up going to the Eagles at 50. If you have looked at the offseason moves, these offseason moves, acquisitions are not really fully Fangio guys. So even though Junior Colts is not really a Fangio linebacker, if he is there at 50, I could totally see it happening. I think Edrin Cooper is more of the likely option as a Fangio linebacker, a little bit thinner. You looked at what he had there in uh, Miami last year. I don't think there was a single guy over 230 pounds in that linebacking core. Junior Colson, closer to 240, closer to even 250. He was listed, but he did end up testing out at like 238. He's a great linebacker. He's my linebacker one. I think the Eagles will be blessed to have him. Pick number 51, Steelers go Roman Wilson. Someone who I've been warming up more and more on. One of the guys where you end up watching the tape more. And it's like, you know, I feel like I disrespected him a little bit by not including him on my receivers list. Granted, it was a top 16 and there's like a lot of really good receivers in this class. Roman Wilson, my only issue with him is that he kept running into defenders while he's running routes. And something for me is... I don't want someone who runs the route drawn on paper as much as the route that's best for the play. Of course, that requires a high level of IQ from your quarterback, which if you're drafting, if you're he's getting drafted number four, I assume he'd have that. So um, you have to adjust for how the play evolves, right? You can't just run what's on paper because there's a defender in your way. I did see that quite a bit with Roman Wilson, but I do think he would be a good asset for the Steelers to be in that Deontay Johnson role. Pick 52 for the Rams. They go Bo Nix. They need to go after a quarterback too for the future. Bo Nix is phenomenal value. At pick 53, the Eagles go Javon Bullard, another Georgia defensive back. I'm just not the biggest guy in Javon Bullard. I got to say it, but he is still a very solid safety. It's just I'm a little bit more into that 110 to 130 range on him than in the top 64. Browns go Mason Smith. He has a supremely high ceiling. We are seeing a little bit of a slip here from, um, from Ruka Rojo, for one, but I'm talking about Tavondre Sweat. Uh, Mason Smith, though, does have a higher ceiling than Tavondre Sweat because, well, Tavondre, we'll talk about him when that time comes, but Mason Smith does have, very similar to Mike Hall, those very fast wins that are, eerily reminiscent of this if you only look at the highlights uh, which shouldn't but you know if it ends up being the best player available or it ends up becoming the best version of themselves he could be very similar to Jalen Carter-esque not saying that's the comp but he does have those flashes pick 55 the Dolphins go to Javian Sanders I still want to go offensive line sometime in here but you know Javian Sanders we have kind of disrespected him and pushed him into the third round category we just disrespected him because he wasn't a first round tight end. Like he's still a solid dude. I just probably wouldn't take him at 55 because I just don't know if in five years I want to keep him as my number one tight end. And for the Dolphins, you want to make win now moves. I don't know if Jatavian is, if you're not going to have him be a starting caliber player in five years, probably shouldn't try to make a move to have him on your team when you're trying to win now. If you get what I'm saying, like if you're not going to provide future value, you're probably not providing current value. Let me put it that way. Pick 56, Cowboys go Peyton Wilson. Just hopefully he stays healthy. But if he does, he's a great athlete. He has untapped potential. 
through the roof because he just hasn't been consistently on the field. So praying to God that that ends up happening. He has a ton of potential. I still would say Edron Cooper would be the right move based on the fact that you know, he's been more healthy. Then we got the Christian Haynes, the Christian Haynes, the Buccaneers going Christian Haynes. Uh, they need a guard slash center to Opeta can play the other role. Christian did slip down my board a little bit. I have not factored that into my grading right here. He's at 34 right now. He will be probably in my 70s. Um, his anchor really became a big problem. It always has been, but it just became even more and more of a problem. And you watch him at the senior bowl. I love his tenacity. That's like my favorite thing about him. And he's a great athlete, but this dude cannot hold his ground. And that scares me, uh, especially in pass pro, but it wasn't an issue in run in run blocking until this year, uh, in my opinion. So there were a lot of times where I was genuinely disappointed, and that hurts. But at pick 57, it's worth taking a swing on him. So the Buccaneers get a very valued addition. Packers end up getting Edron Cooper at 58. Like, yes. Yes, Lord. <laughs> That's a great pick. Uh, pick. I mean, do I need to describe it much more? They need a linebacker pretty damn desperately. And you're getting great value here at pick 58. You also get pass rushing upside too. Pick 59 for the Texans. They go Ruka Roroho. So did they go two defensive interiors? Oh no, they went after Mikey Sanders still earlier. They do need defensive interior help. And Rook is a fantastic player that just has been prospect fatigued to hell. So I do love seeing some love for him right there. The Bills go Cole Bishop at 60. It's one of my dream fits for him. It's that or Green Bay. So I'm very happy to see that end up being what actually happens pick 50 61 the lines go Braden Fisk who ended up playing there at Western Michigan before transferring to Florida State I do think there is a lot of untapped potential of Braden if he ends up you know being under the right wing so to speak and with the acquisition of DJ Reader I think that would be very intriguing to see I still think corner is a position I would go you know if we want to look back on what the lines did in the first round because I'm tripping oh they moved back what happened with their other pick? Um, uh, pick 44, they ended up going Zach Frazier. There we go. I was like, what am I doing? Um, I still think they need edge rusher, potentially. They also need corner. I'd go with that route before Braden Fisk. Uh, pick 62, the Ravens go Xavier Leggett. Would have been what I picked for the Lions. or a lot of teams before that as well, but Xavier Leggett as a Steelers fan would scare the shit out of me on the Ravens. So um, praying to God that does not happen. Drew Phillips, I know that he, he does love um, Andrew Phillips. Y'all know that I've been Andrew Phillips' uh, cheerleader, so to speak, no homo, for a long time. Long time as in, you know, I guess a couple weeks before other people started loving him. But uh, he popped off to me at the Senior Bowl. Didn't actually study him before because there's just a stigma on Kentucky corners. But the moment I just, he just started popping off to me. Like, I didn't know who he was and I wanted to continue watching him. He impressed me. That's when I knew there was something special there. Uh, same thing with Max Melton. He's a phenomenal corner. So these guys are absolute steals here at 63 and 64. You know, there's some certain specific thoughts here. Feel free to pause the video and go check that out. Um, but I do like seeing that. Um, he is, he's awesome. Uh, Andrew Phillips is a great player. He needs to work in his run defense though. That's more importantly than anything. But at pick 65, the Panthers go Jonathan Brooks. You know, first running back off the board. The Panthers don't have a true high-end option at running back. Try to complain about Miles Sanders or complain that I'm not. I'm shitting on Miles Sanders, but, you know, he played behind the best offensive line there. in Philly ended up getting a big contract. Granted, it's not that big of a contract, but it's big enough. Uh, Jonathan Brooks is not a bad option to bring in. You know, I'm not going to complain. I still think you could probably go center here with Hunter Norzod, and I'd like that a little bit more. But Cardinals end up going Brandon Dorless at 66. Uh, he's a top-end player, man. He just is very tough to project where he should be. That's what makes it so tough to say where I'd like him to be on my board. I just don't know what role I'd want him in the NFL. Pick 67, Commanders go Adisa Isaac. He's a talented edge rusher, high IQ. I just don't really love the fact that he wasn't very athletic for his size. And I thought he underwhelmed a little bit there in Mobile. But the commander's 60, at 67, like, I'm not going to complain about that. You're getting a position of need with a with a player of value. So I'm fine with that. Patriots get Malachi Corley at 68. I think with the size of their receiving core, I'd prefer someone with a little bit more size. But you, again, are here in the third round, and you're getting somebody who's great after the catch. It's going to make it a lot easier on your quarterback, Drake May. I'm not going to complain about it. Maybe with their other picks in this draft, we can see them go after Tez Walker. That'd be pretty cool. And size, uh, you get the size right there. 
Niners at 69 go Blake Corum. Nice. You get the Michigan connection at 69. I love that. Pick 70, we got the Giants going Trey Benson. So a nice little running back run here in the top 70. Uh, Trey Benson is my number one running back in the class. I think he'd be a great addition there for New York. Cardinals then go Dom Pooney out of Kansas. I just didn't fall in love with Dominic Pooney. That's just me. I didn't like him as a guard or as a tackle. Apparently his 2022 tape at guard is cool. I prefer to look at the player as they are now, but yes, I do understand there's value in going back and seeing how they did in an actual role. I just didn't see anything from his current tape that projected well to guard, even though in Mobile, he did a solid job. So I'm really hoping he proves me wrong, but I just didn't see anything from the real game tape that made me love him being a day two pick. Tyler Newbin goes to the Jets at 72. Good value. He's just someone who I'm a bit lower on as well. I thought his processing, given his speed, was just not adequate for the NFL, but Tyler Newbin does have those high-end plays. I mean, he, his highlight tape is ridiculous, so good value there for the Jets because it's something that they can potentially take an L on, and they certainly can end up walking out of there with a great player. Jalen Polk then goes to the Lions. I do think a wide receiver is a big position for them, and I think they should go corner, which I see it down at 77, uh, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Kamari ends up going to the Falcons at 74, running a 4.65 is the only reason he's going here, but... I mean, this is great value. Kamari is super efficient in space as well. Good processor. Like to me, he's still certainly worth a top 75 selection. I don't know where he ended up dropping on my board necessarily, but you know, um, <laughs> I should know that off the top of my head, but I'm trying to look out of the corner of my eye while talking to you guys, which essentially you guys can end up seeing it happen anyways in real time. Like I don't, oh, he's at 46 still. It's because I don't think that his play speed ever affected him. I was like, did I drop him that much? I was like, I can't remember that. But at 75, the Bears go Chris Braswell. You know, essentially, this is the Bama version of Adiza Isaac. If we're going to be real here, that uh, you're kind of, they're very similar in terms of effectiveness overall. Um, good player. The Bears need an edge too. And this is somebody at this point, solid value. Spencer Rattler goes to the Broncos as good of a pick as you can ask for at pick 76. Good job for Denver. Pick number 77, we got the Lions going Kalen Carson. Uh, Carson's a top 10 corner on my board. I think he's a phenomenal. He's great in zone coverage as well. Athletically, probably going to be a little bit limited. He was kind of toasted. To, you know, He did seem like he was having a little bit of a tough time keeping up with Keon Coleman, which we do know from the Combine. Keon Coleman's not necessarily the biggest top end speed guy, but he plays fast, which is at least a little bit of a redemption there. Pick 78, we got Roger Rosengarten to the commanders. That's great. I love that. Y'all know I've been hyping up Roger Rosengarten for a hot second now. And, uh, you know, that mobility is awesome. The high end plays are great. Just needs to be a bit more consistent. Falcons didn't end up ruining my Patriots dream by taking Tez Walker at 79. They do need to continue developing. The receiving core, they got guys on very short-term contracts there outside of Mooney as well as Drake London. So I think that's perfectly fine. I'm a little bit higher on some other receivers, but Tez Walker at 79 is not a bad pick. Um, 80 for the Bengals, Theo Johnson. It's not a bad spot to take like the, probably the second or third best tight end, maybe even the best tight end outside of uh, Brock Bowers in the class. Theo Johnson, ton of potential there. I mean, when you look at his game, you really realize, well, I mean, when you look at anybody from Penn State's offense, you see how much Drew Alar didn't allow these guys to showcase their abilities. So, you know, when you want to shit on Theo, when you want to crap on everybody else, like Keandre Lambert Smith, he ended up transferring. Like, you got to realize that some guys just get demoralized when they put in so much effort and it ends up with a ball that they literally cannot catch when they're wide open. Um, and it sucks because I dreamed that Drew Alar might be the guy going forward because y'all know how much I love Penn State. But Theo Johnson's a great pick there for the Bengals. Seahawks end up going Jonah Ellis at pick 81. I think he's a DPR who needs to improve his run IQ. But at 81, this is a hell of a good pick for Seattle. Um, he's high motor, great athlete, ended up messing up, I think, his labrum and ended up missing the final uh, part of the year, which is unfortunate. But the run IQ is a big issue for me. He does end up having that deer in headlights look. Pick 82 for the Colts. DTD, Dadrian Taylor Demerson goes to the Colts. Um, and they need a safety. And DTD, in a very thin safety class, not a bad choice. Pick 83, we got the Rams going Jermaine Burton here. Zero drops on the year. The talent is all there. It really just comes down to him having a poor personality. He has 
very high fluctuations of effort. And to be fair, Milrow was not the most accurate guy on planet Earth. He didn't drop a ball, so it's not like he was uh, getting completely like shellacked by his quarterback play there. But you know, the effort from year to year has been unfortunately very a very large red flag. And he's one of my few players with a negative three on um, his overall it slash ain't factor. He has all the potential in the world. He was a top 32 guy for me for a very long time. Could totally see him working out, especially for the Rams. But, you know, he's going back to LA as well. Went to Calabasas, rival high school of Oaks Christian. Go Oaks. But, you know, I'm just hoping for the best for him. Steelers end up getting Blake Fisher. So I'm all happy. Y'all know that. <laughs> I end up having uh, Blake Fisher right there with Amarius Mim. So, you know, I, I concede. I, I would prefer it if uh, we ended up getting somebody else a little bit than Roman Wilson, but I can't be mad with coming out of the first two days of Blake Fisher. I mean, I think we have another pick here as well, so we'll discuss it with that as well. But Blake Fisher, Graham Barton, as well as Roman Wilson, I just, again, would have preferred Xavier Leggett there. But let's talk about that when we talk about our next pick um, for the Steelers at the end, I think, at 98. Pick for 85 for the Browns, Kron Amagaji. You're developing your future at left tackle. I'm not going to blame you there. He was tackle 17, but I still love him to death. That's how good this tackle class is to me. I'm not going to shame that pick. It's a good developmental guy. Texans then get Cam Kinchins. He just tested out very poorly. Had a little bit of an off year, but you do see so much, so much of what we loved about him. He comes through in little flashes, and I'm praying to God that he ends up getting better and better. Pick 87 for the Cowboys, Jalen Wright. You get a home run hitter right there. I love Deuce Vaughn. Jalen Wright might be a great compliment for him. Pick 88, the Packers go J Kalen Bullock, who is my top safety in the class. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Great value for a team that certainly could use him to pair up with Xavier McKinney. Austin Booker goes at 89. You know, I was very underwhelmed with Austin Booker's tape, but at 89, you can't complain about it too much. He ended up showing there in uh, Mobile why he is at least worth taking a shot on pick number 90 for the Cardinals. They go Marshawn Lloyd. As long as he doesn't fumble, he could have been the number one running back in the class at 220 pounds with that type of athleticism. It's very hard to find. We hype up Isaac Garendo, but Marshawn Lloyd isn't too far behind. And my Lord, my man, Caden Wallace goes at pick 91. That is such a Packers pick, like a great tackle. That will be probably a guard in the short run. Like that's someone who's super flexible. I know it's kind of a hot take for me to say that Caden Wallace should be a guard. I mean, he's not even listed as a tackle slash guard here, but I mean, the reps that he had versus interior offensive line were phenomenal. I think he should be instantly a guard and then you can play him as a tackle when you have to you know potentially let go of Rashid Walker because he needs a little bit more refinement but damn is he a good athlete he's ready day one as a guard in my opinion and he could easily end up being a starter at tackle uh, one of those guys who I'll hitch my wagon to top 64 at number 62 on my board then we got Tevin Wallace here. You know, I'm going back and rewatching the linebacker class probably this weekend because I've been going through every single position to rewatch every single player to make sure I don't miss a single guy. It's the most amount of players I've deep dived ever. So we're making sure we get it right this time. And next year, it's going to be even crazier because we're going to have a deep dive pretty much probably over summer. It's going to be wild. But Tevin Wallace is a good option here. He's young, athletic. The Buccaneers need to have that in their linebacking core. Malik Mustafa goes to the Ravens at 93. A little early for me, but not too early. The Ravens could certainly use some extra rotational depth there in their safety core. I think Geno Stone, um, forgetting where he ended up, might end up on the Steelers. I'm tripping. But um, Malik Mustafa, that's a good depth piece there. He ended up being a really solid safety there in Mobile. I was very excited to see how he ended up playing, and I was impressed. 94, the Niners get Jared Wiley. I think that's such a Niners pick too. I feel like that's just something that's gut feeling. Great move. Chiefs end up getting guard depth here with Christian Mahogany, especially with multiple contracts potentially being up soon. Like, you know, Trey Smith, if you don't want to pay him, Christian Mahogany could end up being that guy who takes over and saves you a good amount of cash. It's over 20 mil a year, right? So I uh, certainly could see that happening. Pick number 96, Makai Wingo goes to the Jaguars. They do need some extra depth on defense and interior there next to Eric Armstead. I'm just glad that it wasn't a super high draft pick. Again, really hoping that Xavier Leggett would have been the pick for them in round two, but it is what it is. Pick 97, DJ James going to the Bengals. I think that you're just getting another guy who's relatively thin in that corner core. I'd rather get someone who's more of an enforcer personally, but they do have a really nice rotation of defensive backs there. DJ James has a lot of talent. Steelers end up getting Braylon Trice at 98. 
I just hope that he ends up finding himself at 275 again. Y'all know he was my number five player in the class before the combine, and it just broke my heart. It broke my heart. I still would have had him graded probably a top five or top six edge rusher, you know, easily at 245 because, you know, his his play was not based on his weight. I think his weight semi-limited him in terms of his overall flexibility, but it allowed to have a better impact on the offensive line, sure. But, you know, Braylon Trice has a ton of potential. The Steelers can nab him at 98. I don't give a damn. Like, we do need to have at least some extra rotation to keep all of our guys healthy and the highest paid defense in the NFL. Rams go Chris Abrams drain. Versatile, talented defensive back out of Missouri. That's a great pick for him. And then we got pick 100. The commanders go Brendan Rice. I'm honestly fine with that. Brandon Rice is a top 64 guy for me right now. I have a ton of faith in him. You know, he looked like he improved as an athlete over the season or over the off season. I want him to improve his hands a bit more because he did end up dropping some balls there over in Mobile that did kind of bother me. But, you know, the talent is there nonetheless. He's a great receiver who could end up being a true starter for the commanders. At pick 101, we got the Panthers going Ben Sinnott. It's a good spot for him to go. He's a really good after the catch tight end. They got the Seahawks getting their linebacker here in Cedric Gray. This is part of that trade back that they got for Sam Howell. They do need a linebacker. Cedric Gray did a great job there in Mobile. Patriots go after a former safety transfer edge rusher in Jalex Hunt. Um, somebody who, I mean, there's no all 22 out there on, on Houston Christian from the sources that I have. So it's usually guys who have very good connections who do have that, you know, PFF ultimate. I wish I did. Again, it's not going to be an excuse for me not having a full grading evaluation, but you know, Jalex Hunt is a fun player to watch. I've seen the majority of his tape through the off season, but you know, I honestly should have studied him more. The Patriots, this feels right up their alley though. You know, no name school with a player with a ton of potential. Cardinals end up going uh, Cedric Van Pran out of Georgia. I mean, he's, uh, it's an interior offensive lineman at 104. That's a good player. Like he graded, I think, 69 or 68 for me. And that's perfectly fine. That's well worth 104 overall. I pick number 105 for the Chargers. Nehemiah Pritchett, he's a good player. Um, didn't end up being in my top 20 corners. He was just outside, but... Um, someone who's been very consistently there as like a third round quality guy since, I mean, TDM was the main dra mock draft simulator when I was drafting Nehemiah Pritchett a couple years ago, but he's a talented player. He's going to be able to stay on a roster. That's how good this cornerback class is though. Pick 106 for the Titans. They go Cam Hart. So he is, I think my corner 17 now because I do end up having, well, we'll talk about him in a little bit, but um, did have end up having to Cambrian Richardson going a little bit higher than him, but very enforceable corner at 106. It's a great pick. Michael Pratt goes to the Giants at 107. I'm fine with that. Still would have preferred Bo Nix in the second over Michael Pratt here, but that's not a large margin because Michael Pratt here is a great pick. Dwayne Carter goes to the Vikings at 108. Good power. He just didn't test out athletically that great, but you kind of want him to be a bull rusher more than anything. Delmar Glaze goes to the Falcons at 109. I just wasn't sold on Delmar. I really wanted to be because I love Maryland players too, but I just wasn't sold even as a guard. I really wanted him to be though. Pick 110, the Chargers go Hunter Norzod, top 64 player eventually on my board. We'll see what happens. Maybe he'll be top 75, but um, he's a great player. He's up there with Graham Barton in terms of where he is on my board. Pick 111, we got the Jets going Malik Washington. It's solid value at this point. I'm just not a big Malik Washington guy. If people really thought Malik Washington was as talented as like what the like media and like Twitter likes to say, he'd be going in the second round or the first. Like people just like to get excited about a small school prospect, and I respect that. But when guys like me say, "Hey, I don't think he's like a real genuine starter. Like he's a flex guy. I'm not a huge fan. I think actually athletically he looks a little bit limited on tape um, in terms of his overall speed. Like." He doesn't come, he doesn't flash on the screen in terms of his play speed very, very high. I mean, testing wise, he did great. So good for him. But, you know, this is where I think it's okay to take Malik Washington. And I think that people get a little bit butthurt when everybody takes him here, just doesn't want to say anything about it. He's a good player. He's just not what the other players in his class are. So keep that in mind. Um, then we got Braylon Allen here for the Raiders. I, I love the idea of getting a big, heavy, bruising back who's super young. Just, I was very underwhelmed with Braylon Allen's tape. Uh, Kyrie Jackson goes to the Ravens at 113. That's a very physical corner. I think the Ravens would be very happy with that. Isaiah Adams, guard slash tackle out of Illinois. 
I think he should be a pure guard. So I'm happy to see that's a pure guard designation, but um, he's a talented player, man. He just got the short end of the stick having to play tackle when he is a very enforceful guard. Pick 115, the Bengals go to Vondre Sweat. He falls because he's essentially proven that he, A, is untrustworthy, but B, still really dabbles in uh, the party life, which he's on record as saying he was done with that and then ends up getting arrested three weeks later for DWI. Pick 116, Jaguars going Gabriel Murphy. You're getting a talented, deep edge rusher here. Gabriel's a good guy who could end up potentially getting starting reps on a team. I don't think he will end up being a starter, but okay, maybe I should say getting reps on a team. Like he's able to get some reps on the field. So at 116, that's as good as you could probably ask for. For a team like the Jaguars, who are trying to make a good push, this is basically security for uh, whatever happens to your edge core. Pick 117, the Colts go Tanner Bordellini. He didn't really wow me too much. There's actually some good tape out there on him, but a little too inconsistent for me. At 117, that's perfectly fine. It's just, I don't think that you should expect for him to start anytime soon. Dominique Hampton going at 118 to the Seahawks. Um, you know, I'm not a big guy in the safety class, but he's 220 pounds. He's an enforcer. The Seahawks do like to have that rotation of safeties. So I respect that. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee to the Steelers. I would lose my marbles. Y'all know where's he at? <laughs> he's at number 40 on my board. I love Jarvis Brownlee jr. Uh, easily one of my favorite players in the class. Again, Steelers are coming out of this draft with some really damn good players. Braylon Trice, Jarvis Brownlee, Graham Barton, Blake Fisher, and, um, I mean, Roman Wilson, like I'd be perfectly happy with that draft. Uh, Eagles go Jalen McMillan. That's a perfect wide receiver three for them. Like, I think that's probably what you should be aiming for unless you do see, uh, the proper value for a receiver there in the second Kate Stover goes to the Broncos. You know, it's a, I mean, it's a guy that you can just add into that tight end core and see if he ends up sticking former edge rusher. He's been getting better every year. Javon Foster to the bears at 122 is probably my favorite pick so far for the bears in this draft. There's not many. <laughs> so, I mean, Javon Foster is someone who could end up being a starting caliber tackle. He graded out the same as Graham Barton as a pure tackle. And that's pretty damn awesome. I think he end up he could end up actually beating out Braxton Jones there at left tackle. Uh, Brandon Coleman ends up going to the Texans. He actually would have ended up being my tackle number 20. And, you know, I think that he should. And I mean, for the Texans, it's a great fit. I probably would have put that as one of the dream fits. He needs a mentor because... Um, it's him as well as JC Latham in terms of processing the game. Just not there, just not there. Not great processing. They do seem to get a little bit lost. And a lot of those reps where it's like the deer and headlights look is there pretty damn consistently, but the potential pass blocking of Brandon Coleman is phenomenal. I really think this guy is pretty damn awesome if he ends up being mentored properly and grows into a proper role. So I think this is a great pick. 49ers, Christian Jones. I was someone who has been harping on Christian Jones because he did a pretty damn good job there at Mobile. I just couldn't sell myself on him during those games that I was watching, man. I mean, this was against NFL talent and he couldn't hold up. I mean, there's just, I don't know if he could hold up as a guard either. He's a late day three guy for me, but for the Niners, you're having him be a developmental player. That's fine. That's good. So for the Niners, I think that's perfectly acceptable to take him in the fourth. But for a team that maybe doesn't have the mentorship there or needs that instant impact, I do not recommend Christian Jones. Audric Estime goes to the Buccaneers, ended up running a better 40 time at his pro day. So hallelujah for that. He's a really good balance. Uh, he's a really good contact balance back. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. The Buccaneers do have a role for that that is available. And I think he'd, he'd fill it very well. Ray Davis out of Kentucky goes to the Packers at 126. I don't know if I see the value there for the Packers, but there are some games of Ray Davis. Like, I think it was, I think I was watching Mason Smith versus Kentucky. And one of my lines was like, chill the F out, Ray Davis. This guy looks like an absolute animal. So he has that tape where it's like, whoa. So, you know, exciting to see if it ends up actually coming to fruition in the NFL. But he also lied about his height. I knew it because I was like literally as tall, if not taller than him. <laughs> it's like this guy was listening to like 5'11". I was like, come on, Ray. Like, you ain't fooling nobody there. Pick number 127, the Texans go Will Shipley. At this point, that's fine because you're getting a home run hitter. Will Shipley's a great player. Probably one of the more undervalued running backs in the class. Bills get Javon Baker at 128. That's phenomenal. You're getting Javon Baker and you're ending up getting a talented wide receiver in Brian Thomas. Like that boosts your receiving core right away, probably better than it already was before with Stefan Diggs. 
hot take, but you know, you are getting really good value. You Cole Bishop, Javon Baker, and you end up with Brian Thomas Jr. I'm sold. Pick 129, Mason McCormick goes to the Vikings. I am dying to love Mason McCormick. I'm dying to love him. The interior offensive line video is going to be coming out. So I'll save the majority of the analysis for that. I can't. I can't sell myself on him, man. I can't. There's there's just nothing about his game that shows any form of respect for offensive line talent. Like, there's nothing intricate about his game. And I know guys love the guys who are maulers and grapplers, and that's super fun. But the NFL isn't one on one play where you make a big play. If you're a guard, you're not a good guard because you have one good play that makes people excited about you. It's because you have zero reps or very few reps that someone can point to and say, you messed up the play. Your job is to make sure the play goes as as designated. Not You're not the playmaker, right? Now, it's fun to have that extra added oomph and excitement, but if you cannot play the position the majority of the time, you should not be in the NFL. Not saying Mason McCormick can't be in the NFL, but the amount of love this guy gets, I think this is perfectly reasonable. Like I'm talking about the guys who think he's a second round pick. I don't get it. I'm asking people to show me more than just him pancaking a guy because the NFL is not about pancaking guys. When you're an offensive lineman, it's about being consistent and effective. And that's not what Mason McCormick is showing out to be. He has very poor mechanics overall. That's going to be abused by top end interior defensive linemen. And if he ends up trying to play center, even that, I mean, cause he's taking some center reps that scares the shit out of me. So, um, at one twenty nine is perfectly fine, but I just want to take a little bit of a moment there before we end up going a little bit more into the analysis of him in the interior offensive line video. Mo Kamara goes to the Ravens at one thirty. I have him as a top 64 player. Perfectly fine with that. Um, except I'm a Steelers fan, so I shouldn't be fine with it. Uh, Chiefs end up going Bucky Irving. You know, he just tested out very, very poorly, but one of the guys who makes people miss better than most players. I love that for him. Niners end up going Zach Zinter at 132. He broke his leg. He ended up actually underwhelming me quite a bit. He's right now currently the guy who's finishing up his re-eval, but he's, I, I wanted to love him more. Uh, he ended up having a really good initial eval and then the re-eval is not doing too hot for him. But at 132, this is certainly within the range where he should be taken. It's just, you know, I was hoping that, I could start seeing some Chad Reuter logic and him going in the second round. Pick 133 for the Jaguars going Jalen Simpson. Uh, he's performed very, very well over the offseason. He did a good job there. Um, I think he was in Mobile. 99% sure he was in Mobile. But, I mean, I like Jalen Simpson from the tape I saw. At 133, it's palatable. Gabe Hall is very disrespected. Someone who I love to take in the seven-round mock drafts because PFF Mock Draft Simulator absolutely roasts his ass for no reason. Uh, he was one of the best defensive linemen there at the Senior Bowl, effectiveness-wise. As a pass rusher, I love it for the Jets. That's a great pick. Pick number 135, you get the McCaffrey brother, Luke, to come to the squad. I'm always down for Luke McCaffrey, man. I mean, bringing him back with his brother. I mean, as a Steelers fan, we've kind of done that with a lot of the players like the Watts and the Herbigs and all that. So, fine with me. So we got some of his extra commentary here. Feel free to pause the video if you like. At round number five, we start out with DeCamrian Richardson, my number 17 corner in the class. Really crazy athlete. Just um, he needs to refine his game a little bit more. He's tenacious. I love that. He needs some refinement. Pat Sertan, one hell of a mentor for him. Uh, Satoa Laomea, he is probably one of the worst right tackles I've ever seen, but I see so much potential in him as a guard that... I'm not going to shame the Patriots at 137 for it. Pick 138, the Cardinals go Tommy Eichenberg, someone who I still think it's the short end of the stick. It's a good value for the Cardinals, man. I think he could end up starting. Uh, Commanders go Tip Ryman at 139. They need a tight end, and Tip Ryman's a fun story. Uh, feel free to go and watch the NFL Combine for them to break it down much better than I ever could. Pick 140 for the Chargers, Jeremiah Trotter. This team needs linebacker help. I don't know why Jeremiah Trotter slipped this much, like, I thought I was really low on Jeremiah Trotter because I was obviously one of the first people to criticize him. But, you know, it doesn't matter if you're first. It just matters if you're right in the long run. So I don't take that much pride in that, apart from Andrew Phillips, because you all know I love Andrew. Uh, but Jeremiah Trotter is a great value at 140. Panthers then go Cedric Johnson and Bo Braid back to back. Cedric Johnson is a ton of potential talent-wise. I mean, I've seen it, but it just kind of dropped off a little bit last year. I didn't see that progression. Uh, Bo Braid, he's a developmental talented safety out of Maryland. I love Maryland DBs, so I'm not going to shame it. But I do think Tyke Smith is 
a lot better. And he goes to the Falcons at 143. So the Falcons are kind of clean in house right now. Renardo Green goes at 144. Obviously, I have my opinion on Renardo Green. You guys know that I love Renardo Green. Uh, the Jaguars end up getting two of my favorite cornerbacks in the class. So I'm perfectly fine with that. At pick 145, the Broncos end up getting Johnny Wilson, my number 32 player in the class. So again, you guys know what I think. Uh, Titans end up going Jacob Cowing. I do have a wide receiver in corner video. If you guys are wondering why I'm not going into deep analysis, also we still have 100 picks to go. But Jacob Cowing uh, was one of my top 64 players for a very long time. Will probably end up being still a top 100 player. You know, he just is a little bit small and didn't perform as well as I wanted him to at the Senior Bowl. Fabian Lovett ends up going to the Broncos. I think it's a little early for him with some other talent on the board. I'd still actually take a swing on Jamari Thrash, even though I just got. Uh, Johnny Wilson, but it's a little bit early for me. Love the pick for the Raiders though. Jamari Thrash is somebody who like, he's giving me a slightly, like slightly tank Dell vibes from how he performed in the senior bowl. Uh, one of those players who I'll end up probably breaching up my board into the top 75. I really ended up liking him. Anthony Gold ends up being pick number 149 for the Bengals. Another player who really wowed me Every time I saw Oregon State, this guy is making plays. I'm very excited to see what he does in the NFL. The Bengals do need a slot option and potential return option there. Saints and I'm going Tory Taylor. I don't study special teams. Call me out on it. I think other people are a lot better at that. And I prefer to spend my time on the, like, I can't say impact players because I certainly believe that Tory Taylor is, um, Tory Taylor definitely is an impact player based on where he's being drafted. But I just personally don't, value special teams and i know that you guys don't value opinions on special teams <laughs> because in seven round mock drafts that's where you start taking them right and i detest seven round mock drafts but we give respect to people who make them like this um so shout out again uh, to our buddy here pick number 151 the colts end up going tyrone tracy for i think he was a four or five year wide receiver before switching to running back at purdue uh, fun fact, I think he has more receiving yards on his career than the majority of the first round quality guys, but um, this is a good blocking and receiving back. I think that's perfectly fine. Commanders end up going a def one Ulufo show. As long as he stays healthy, this guy's a top 50 player in the class. I mean, he's super consistent. One of the top rated PFF linebackers. Jaguars get a home run hitter in Isaac Garendo at 153. Why not at this point? He's a freakish build, one of the best RAS scores of all time for running backs. Pick 154 and 155 for the Rams. They go Cody Schrader and Leonard Taylor. I'm not super high on Cody Schrader. I think there's some better options available. I would have taken Quantez Stiggers, for example, who's going to be 157, but Leonard Taylor's ridiculous value. He fell because, again, it's another Miami player who did not perform to their, to their maximum capabilities this year. I don't know what happened, but I'm really hoping he ends up having that... Um, what am I, why am I tripping? Gervin Dexter treatment where, you know, Gervin had a little bit of a rough last year, but ended up showing out why he was so special in the NFL because we've seen that ceiling. Cody's just not a guy who I'm super duper duper high on. I think he's a good player, but at 155, it's a low value position. I think the Rams can get some better value down the board. Taj Washington goes to the Browns. He's a fun little gadget weapon. I don't mind it. The Browns could certainly take their swings on wide receivers if they like, because it's a pretty expensive receiving core. So anything to save some cash helps. 157, Quantez Stickers goes to the Vikings. I love that. Uh, I'm, I mean, Quantez Stickers is, he's tested out very well. He's shown out the Shrine Bowl, come from the CFL. Like, that's great. Uh, I love to see guys who can transition from these under these lower leagues to come back to the big league and end up doing a great job. Dolphins end up going Christian Boyd. They do need defensive interior. He's someone who is in high demand, but I think it is because he's a day three pick and a lot of teams want to see what this Northern Iowa kid who showed out in the off season could do. And she's ended up going Brennan Jackson. So talked about him earlier. He he most likely could be coming on during the draft, but we're going to be doing a post draft show for him for sure. Uh, love that for him. You know, again, one of the friends of the show, he's been on the show multiple times now, you know, great dude, stay in contact with him. Like, you know, one of the guys who I would personally love to go grab a drink with, you know, actually be friends with them. Like there's some players when you talk to them and you could just tell that, you know, when I'm having a conversation with them, they're just trying to get that publicity and, you know, just trying to get more exposure and there's very few of those guys. I haven't very run, in, run into very many of them. But guys like Marshawn Nealon and Brennan Jackson, but Brennan especially, because Brennan's actually been a friend of mine now. Um, it it shows you to the character that they have. And, you know, I, I've been able to meet some guys who don't have that. So I really do appreciate when guys have genuine appreciation 
for what others do and who other people are. Brendan's a great guy. You know, I think he's getting, I know he got engaged, but I think he's getting married soon. So proud of him for that. Hope he has a, he has a great looking girlfriend and he's a great looking guy. He's going to have an amazing family. Like I know that's not what you guys signed up for when you watch the video, but you know, he's like, I'm wishing the best for him and the chiefs. I think that's going to be a great spot for him to go pick 160. The bills end up going Bo Limmer. He's going to be someone who slips quite a bit. Uh, I don't know where I have him right now on my board. Uh, he's at 66. He's probably going to be around 166. Hate to say it. Um, his game dropped off the cliff. It really did. Uh, pick number 161, Xavier Thomas. He's a top 50 player on my board. Or he He's around there. Yeah. We, oh, he is he? I'm tripping balls. Yeah, he's number 48. Uh, he's a top 50 player on my board. Eagles getting a DPR with uh, run stuffing upside like Xavier at 161. Wild to me. Uh, 162 for the Cardinals. Miles Harden, as long as he stays healthy, this dude popped out at the, at the combine, but he definitely has some really good tape out there. Uh, pick 163 for the Bills. Nelson Caesar, another guy who has super high-end reps. Uh, just needs to be a little bit more consistent. Pick 164 for the Lions. English is tough. Uh, Bray McGregor, he's another guy. You're keeping a guy local to Michigan as well, but he's another guy who does have that ceiling. You're just kind of worried a little bit about the floor, but the Lions do have a nice rotation there. 165 for the Ravens. Matt Goncalves, or I don't know if... I'd designate him as a guard, but he's coming off a season ending injury. So I'm excited to see that the Ravens snag another very talented player there at 165. But I haven't really thought about him as a guard. It's intriguing. 166 for the Giants. They go Josh Newton. They need corner help. Josh Newton is a very uh, poised veteran. Veteran. I mean, he's a rookie if you think about it, but he is going to be coming in with a lot of starting experience. Could end up being the starter there. Eric Watts ends up going to the Vikings. If I'm not mistaken, he had some crazy measurables. So i uh, excited to see what he is able to do, but he's probably more of a depth piece in my opinion. Dylan Laube going to the Saints or Lube. I, I should know how to pronounce his name. I got to see him in person, but um, Dylan going to the Saints. It's not a jaw-dropping pick. I think Elijah Jones is a damn good pick. Going to his defensive coordinator there in Green Bay, I can almost feel like that was a forced pick, but I obviously, you know, I don't think there was any forced picks in this. Marcus Harris ends up going to the Saints, though. He's he actually feasted. I'm forgetting if it were it might have been on uh, Bo Limmer, but one of these interior offensive linemen had an awful day versus Marcus Harris there. That defensive interior kind of roasted them, so a little bit embarrassing there. But Marcus Harris has had some really fun reps. He's a feisty dude. MJ Devonshire, then Goatley Badeze going to or Idze going to the Eagles developmental guys just I don't think that I'd be going for developmental corners unless they have true ceiling I don't I didn't see it with MJ Devonshire but you know I'm hoping for the best on that one Jordan Jefferson goes to the Chiefs you know he has some very solid consistent reps there uh, ended up showing they might have some personality problems there with getting a little feisty over uh in the senior bowl but yeah, 173, it's worth it. Matt Lee, to me, is a top 100 player. He might end up being probably like top 120, but he ended up showing out being a lot better than I ever expected because I don't trust Miami players at this point. But, you know, Matt Lee, after having a pretty awful first drive to the first ever time I saw him, I was like, oh, great. All right, do I even watch the rest of this? But um, I sat through and, you know, he had a rough start to his game to the games I saw, but he ended up finishing pretty damn strong. And I think this could end up being a real starter for the Cowboys. At 174, that could be a great steal. 175, Javon Solomon goes to the Saints. Great player. Man, I keep <laughs> the damn desk. Um, that's that's really good value. I love that for him. Jordan McGee is going to be the Sam linebacker for the Niners for the future. That's a steal right there. Big fan of that. Round six, we got the Vikings going Anaya Smith. Uh, fan of that one. He's a good gadget player with the new kickoff rules as well. He's going to be extra valuable. Uh, the Steelers end up going Keaton Oladapo. I haven't studied enough of Keaton, if I'm going to be completely honest. I thought he was fine over the senior bowl, but you know, based on the draft that the Steelers have gotten so far, I'm going to be perfectly acceptable of this. Keith Randolph goes to the Seahawks. He's had some good reps as well. Pretty sure he was at the senior bowl, like 95% sure he's at the senior bowl. Um, and when you're at the senior bowl, you're more so focused on uh trying to survive on four hours of sleep than anything. But uh, Keith Randolph is a fun player to watch. He's a good depth piece. I think Seattle would be pretty damn happy with that. Jaden Crumity has, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of top 30 visits, including with the Steelers. So I'm happy the Patriots steal him. But Mississippi State is a great breeding ground of dudes who have a ton of talent. So, you know, I'm going to trust this one. 
I mean, Jaden Cromley's had some flash, flashy plays, but I'm going to trust that Mississippi State gives him the foundation required for him to have success. The Chargers then go Trevor Keegan. He's someone who is going to be a you know late day three guy for me, but you know when you do have a couple interior offensive linemen already drafted now with J.C. Latham as well, potentially being a guard, um, does feel like a little bit of overkill. I'd prefer to go after a pure center at this point. Like Kings, well, Kingsley is actually lower than some of the other centers I have, but let's continue on anyways. Jaheim Bell goes to the Titans. He's great steal at this point. You know, someone who is potentially going to be like a first or second round player in my book. Uh, but Justin Obwegi, Obwegi goes to the Giants. He's a good player too. He's just 290 pounds. He's a weird tweener and the Giants could have a role for him for sure. But, you know. This is a depth piece. This is a time to get depth pieces. Like the Dolphins. They're getting a feisty guy in Kingsley. I love the drive. I love the energy. Um, the application of that energy hasn't always proven to be fruitful. The Jets end up getting Devin Leary at 185. Devin Leary is one of those guys who I can end up seeing working out in the NFL. So uh, at 185, that's a good, damn good pick. And a pretty thin quarterback class after the top guys. Cardinals at 186 go Jaquan Jackson. And he's a fun player to watch some there in senior bowl. Uh, also almost got killed by him getting, he ran off this, uh, the sideline. And then, uh, I almost got absolutely yeeted by him. So grateful for Jaquan for not killing me there. But at 187, the Falcons go Rasheen Ali. I love Marshall players. I just don't think that he's draftable, but you know, we'll go back through the running back class. It's probably one of the last ones I'll ever like go through. I just didn't really enjoy running, watching the running backs this year. So you know, there's certain positions. I'll admit I like watching a little bit more, but then uh, the Texans go Jalen Harrell and Nathaniel Watson, both high end guys with pretty low floors in my opinion, but the Texans kind of already have the edge rusher and linebacker position pretty solidified. So you're essentially just taking swings on dudes who can end up making the roster and at that spot. I'm fine with that. Jerry and Jones slips to 190. I think he could end up starting in the NFL. Uh, I love that for the saints. I don't think he might be able to start right away. Like it's a fringe start right away, but I do think he ends up being an NFL starter. Miles Cole is almost 37 inch arms. So the Colts getting him here at 191. You're just saying, screw it. We're going to see what the hell happens. Uh, I think he, at the senior bowl, he only had like one move. It was like one spin move. Uh, so definitely a raw player, but at 191, why not? Right. At 192, we got Jordan Travis to the Seahawks coming off. I think he had a leg break as well, man. There was a lot of leg fractures here. Uh, but Jordan Travis, it sucked to see that happen, but great athlete. You're essentially getting a good depth piece there. Jordan Travis does have the ceiling, but he has a dirt low floor as a quarterback. Pick 193, Patriots go Bub Means. He ended up, I think, being in someone's uh, three-round mock draft recently, so that's pretty cool. But Bub Means tested out really well. Got to show some love for Pitt as uh, you know, a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Pitt number 194, the Bengals go Eric All. As long as he stays healthy, this dude's one of the best tight ends in the class. The problem is he just has not been available. Steelers snag McKinley Jackson at 195. I think that's incredible. Not many guys with that physical profile of 320 plus. And McKinley does have some really good explosiveness on tape. Tanner McLaughlin goes to the Rams at 196. Former wide receiver, tight end there, Arizona. I would love to see him being deployed by Sean McVay. Joe Milton, y'all know what I think of Joe Milton. I think the Steelers should have probably taken Joe Milton earlier, but because, you know, we have literally two quarterbacks, I think three quarterbacks on one year deals, but Joe Milton going to the Falcons is incredible. You know, that cannon cannot be denied. I think that'd be honestly insane. <laughs> Y'all know I love Joe Milton though. Uh, you got Chigo. I, I should know how to say this name, but a museum out of Colorado state to the dolphins. I mean, you have someone who's coached up by prime. I think that's, you know, worth taking the swing on at that point. Saints then go Josh Proctor. He's a solid safety. I don't know if he sticks to the roster, but this is a team that needs to take swings on guys. Tyler Davis goes to the Bills at 200. An underwhelming player, but certainly one that is good enough to stick to a 53 or at least a practice squad. So you're getting an asset nonetheless. Will Riker goes to the Lions. I'm going to be honest, I don't know enough about the positional needs on special teams for the majority of teams. I should, but I didn't. Uh, pick 202 for the Packers. They go Tyron Hopper. Tyron Hopper is, I mean, I think he's a top 100 player on my board. I love Tyron Hopper. He's a great pass rusher. Just needs to learn how to tackle. Jacob Monk goes to the Broncos. One of the few centers I did not study in this class, but I like Duke players, so wouldn't mind it. Ethan Driscoll, this is proper range for him out of Marshall. Uh, you know, he's just 
and he's a developmental tackle. In the Bills, you can never go wrong going offensive line. Sion Vaki should have came out as a running back. I think he would go higher than 205 if he did so. Uh, just had really poor measurables, but going BPA is never a bad idea in the 200s. JT Bertrand, as well as Curtis Jacobs go back to back. Um, you can see Curtis Jacobs right now on your screen at 65 overall on my board, so you know what I think of 207. But JT, I, d I didn't really, uh, I honestly didn't have enough emotional investment in this linebacker class to fall in love with many guys, but they do need a linebacker. It's good value there. Walter Rouse is a tackle slash guard prospect. He's not from, uh, he actually played at Stanford before. So finally we found a typo. Yay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, who cares? I mean, mine probably has some typos too, but, um, Walter Rouse, former tackle of Stanford, but ended up going to play left tackle there over at the university of Oklahoma. But I think he's a tackle slash guard hybrid. He needs to work on his anchor, but at 208, good depth. Kalen King goes to the Rams. I love that. I mean, you're going to be potentially molding him to be a safety. And with Cam Curl hit there, that's a great pick. 210, the Eagles go Ryan Flournoy. He's a fun guy to watch. One of the guys who just, you know, you never even heard about him before. I mean, if you did, good for you. But you didn't really hear about him before the Senior Bowl in the offseason. And uh, he ended up showing out. Good guy. And 210, that's good value. Niners end up going Blake Watson. Did not get a combine invite, but he's a fun player to watch. I think the Niners, that's right up their alley. Travis Glover is a guard slash tackle prospect for Georgia State. I think Jaguars game at 212 is phenomenal. Evan Williams to the Rams. One of the safeties I did not study. I should have, but I didn't yet. Giovanni Manu, British Columbia tackle. I mean, I love you, Dave. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know Giovanni Manu, and I studied a lot of freaking tackles in this class. Uh, Khalid Duke coming out of Kansas State. I don't know if he makes a roster there for the Niners, but might as well take some swings on some dudes. Xavier Weaver is a fun guy. I think he could actually end up sticking to a 53, if not practice squad there for the Cowboys. Good pick. Nathan Thomas. I love Louisiana players. Like, I just do. At 217, I'll always bet on them. Uh, Marfius Leofu, or Leo Fow out of Notre Dame. He had some good reps there as well. He's had some flashes for the Ravens at 218. Not a bad idea. Ryan Watts. You know, you're getting a good DB there. The Packers are just essentially taking BPA. Cornelius Johnson for the Buccaneers is a good pick too. I mean, you're getting somebody who could potentially stick to your roster in the sixth round. And for a team that is trying to championship hunt, that's a good pick. Garrett Greenfield, super athletic tackle out of South Dakota State. This is good range for him. I thought he was on a similar par to um, to what we saw from his left guard buddy and Mason McCormick. Uh, commanders go Dejon Anthony. It's good value for a safety prospect because, I mean, they're going to need somebody to develop there. Layden Robinson for the Raiders. They're going after offensive line like crazy. I like that. Uh, Sam Hartman goes to the Bengals. He just has pretty poor velocity, but he's had some really good throws in there. Chargers go Dwight McLaughlin. Y'all know I like Dwight a lot, so this is a great pick for the Chargers. Frank Crum is an athletic tackle from Wyoming. You can play pretty much play anywhere. You're getting a good depth piece there for Arizona. Isaiah Davis goes to the Browns. Um, I'm always going to support some FCS players in here south dakota state i love that for him he's a good back too uh pick number 228 the ravens go after tarheeb steel isn't still tarheeb um i was in the heap portion and i just ended up going to still uh you know i love taking shots on maryland corners love keeping them there in baltimore evan anderson from fau goes to the raiders you know i don't know enough about evan to really give a full evaluation but getting some extra defensive interior help Never a bad idea. Vikings going Tyrese Knight out of UTEP. Uh, you know, that's a fun player. He's a fun player. Nonetheless, I don't know if he actually sticks to a roster, him or Dylan McMahon, but you know, it's, it's guys I'd worth. It's kind of like you're throwing stuff at the wall and see if it sticks. Uh, Mark Perry then goes to the Patriots at 231. You know, Mark Perry is actually a pretty experienced guy. So I like that quite a bit. 233 for the Cowboys. We already just talked about Dylan McMahon. Uh, Shaw Smith Wade. Could be one of the dark horse picks this draft. He was someone who I fell in love with with his play versus uh, Jordan Addison not too long ago. It's been a minute. But uh, Shaw Smith-Wade had some good reps there at the Senior Bowl as well. Could end up being an actual starter on a team uh, at the end of his career. Tylen Grable. He was a very good combine monster there. For, uh, so UCF tackle probably won't be someone who's more of a hybrid player, but... Uh, the Colts get themselves a good project there. AJ Barner for the Seahawks. I love that. It's one of my favorite fits so far, tight end wise. Uh, great blocker. Like it fits right up with the run heavy motto of the Seahawks. Cam Little out of Arkansas going to the Jaguars again. Like same thing with Ryan Renko, punter out of BYU going to the Bengals. 
I'm just not the guy to really give you really good analysis. There's some great guys out there, I'm sure. I'm just not one of them. Baron Matos at Dominican Republic. Yo, this is sick. I'm sorry. This is this is awesome. Uh, going to the Texans. I mean, I love it. Uh, KT Levelston out of Kansas State. I just really didn't like his play. I felt bad for Cooper BB. Um, I just didn't really like him that much. Josiah Zerum out of Eastern Kentucky, goes to the Panthers. Might as well take your shot on offensive tackles at this point. Isaiah Williams tested out really poorly for his size, but his play, he's had, I think, over a 200-yard game. The Dolphins could get themselves a steal there. Ladarius Henderson, you have to put him as a left tackle. I don't think he can play as a guard. Just honestly, I don't think he's good enough to be a guard, but he's my number nine tackle in the class. I'm a psycho. I get it, but um, the issues I see in his game are easily coachable, in my opinion, so... I think that's worth it for the Titans to take him, see what the hell happens, and they might end up actually being able to get a good tackle out of it. J.B. and Cohen goes to the Browns. Uh, just someone who, I mean, I wanted so much more from him, and I just didn't get it, but at 243, you might as well. Javante Jean-Baptiste, you know, you're getting a high floor edge rusher out of Notre Dame. I just don't think the ceiling is too high on him. Tulu Griffin out of Mississippi State. Uh, you know, I think his name is Ladatrick Griffin. It's it's a player that you're worth. I mean, the Packers take day three swings on receivers all the time. Trey Taylor out of Air Force. He's actually the best player out of Air Force I've probably seen. Besides, I think there was a receiver a couple years ago. I ended up going to see the Surf Pro um, First Responders Bowl when they played Louisville. There was a wide receiver on the team, and he was phenomenal. Willie Drew, cornerback out of Virginia State, goes to the Texans. Uh, good time to get some good depth there. Kamani Vidal is a talented running back. I've seen him as high as RB4 on some people's boards, so the Bills get a steal there. Johnny Dixon's a talented slot corner out of Penn State. Good pick there for the Lions. Logan Lee is a supremely athletic freak of defensive material out of Iowa. It seems to be on par with what the Ravens look for. Kamal Hayden, I mean, he is, I think he's built for the NFC West. He just tested out so poorly around like a 4 6 40. And he kind of plays like a two. I comped him to a middle school bully. He slipped a little bit down my board. Uh, Darius Musau, linebacker to UCLA. We got a little bit of a run on linebackers here. Going to be honest, I'm not super passionate about the linebacker class, but uh, Musau didn't really wow me too much. The Titans should be able to get some depth there. Same thing with the Chargers and Rams. I think they should all go after it, so I'm glad that they did. Uh, Michael Barrett actually might end up making the starting roster for the Chargers, though. I really like Michael Barrett. Jalen Ford's honestly a good player, too. I think he's better than some of the linebackers that went earlier. Then we got Nick Guerrillo out of South Carolina. You know, I love seeing some tackle slash center prospects going to the Packers because that's just right on their MO. CJ Hansen out of Holy Cross. I love seeing that as well. And ending off with Dylan Johnson go the Jets at 256 and 257. Dylan Johnson's had some good reps in there and I love being able to get some versatility there with CJ Hansen. So we made it. We did it. Thank you so much for watching. I love y'all. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> I'll see you on the far side. Peace.